right, Xander, thanks very much uh, for that. Why don't we uh, bring in my first guest and my best guest of the weekend of the season here, and that would be the host of the NFL Matchup Show, national correspondent for ESPN and Hall of Fame elector. That's Sal Palantonio. Sal, how you doing, pal? And Pat, we just had our Hall of Fame selection committee meeting uh, on Tuesday. So you will hear about the 2023 class soon enough from the Hall of Fame. So we're excited about that. I, boy, I'm so excited about this weekend's games, especially yeah. in South Philadelphia. A little yeah. rumble in the jungle no, in South Philadelphia, Pat, on yeah, Saturday know. night. You know what? I love when Dexter Lawrence said, I told my mom, stay away. Stay home. Don't go to the game. <laughs> How about that? Let me let me start here, Sal. We have a we have a few minutes here before our first break. Let me start off with my theory, and I probably have posited this to you before, but to me, the Eagles have kind of in the last I'll say half of the season, I've kind of dragged this number one seat around with them, and it's almost like a guy trying to win the Masters from start to finish. That's I a good. A number that's one a seat, really good analogy. Yeah, oh, I, I think sure. a number one seat starts to weigh on you. Is is that the sense that you get as opposed to a Giants team that's a six, uh, a six seed and feeling its oats. You know, number one seeds really haven't had that much success recently in the NFL playoffs. So there has to be some truth to that psychologically. And I think you compound that, Pat, by the great unknown uh, of Jalen Hurts. Right. So, you know, when you have a great unknown of Jalen Hurts, so it's pretty clear. Here's what we know. We know that he's taken the restrictor plate off in practice that he looks good. The ball has zip coming out of his hands, good velocity, good trajectory, nice spin, throwing the ball deep and accurate and on time. And they're practicing a lot of tempo on offense, which I think is a good thing. And we'll get to that in a second. He's moving around quickly. But the great unknown, Pat, is if he gets hit, how does the shoulder respond? Right. That's the great unknown. And when you have that great unknown like that, the suspense – and drama going into this game is incalculable. You I cannot know. overlook it. I know. And you cannot overstate it. So while I think the other games are definitely good and interesting, I think this is, without a doubt, the marquee game because of that suspense. Right. Just to dispense with the other uh, injury issues, Devontae Maddox out uh, for the Eagles. Lane Johnson, give me just a quick take. Do you think how – Close to 100%, do you think Lane Johnson is, if at all? That's something we'll have to watch, just like with Jalen Hurts. We will watch Jalen Hurts very closely in warm-ups and in the first quarter. We will watch Lane Johnson. Lateral movement is important right. for, a offense, for an offensive tackle. Right. Uh, and an abductor muscle goes from your groin area to your knee, and it's on the right side, which for a right tackle – is also problematic. I'm sure he'll get a little happy juice and, uh, you know, he'll try to stay out there as long as possible in this football game. Um, as Jalen Hurts will probably get a little shot in his shoulder as well right. to help him get through the football game. But, you know, this is something we will definitely watch. And as for Hurts, you're going to watch for three specific things, right? So he led the NFL in the number of air yards, his touchdown passes Travel 31 yards. His 22 touchdown passes traveled an average of 31 yards. That's the longest in the NFL. So we're going to watch. Is he airing it out, Pat? Is he throwing the ball deep in the first quarter? Right. Number two, they designed five runs on average for Jalen Hurts. Just five. You would think with all the running he did this year, it would be a lot more, right? Yep. It's only five design runs per game. That okay. means the other runs are his decision in the run pass option okay. or the zone read. Yeah, the zone read, right, right, right. Zone read or run pass option. It is his decision. With the run pass option, he's looking at the linebacker. With the zone read, he's looking at the safety. Or he's following the blockers and the defensive end. Lots of different decisions for him to make. Is he going to be a willing participant in that, or are we going to see him hand the ball off in designed runs to Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, and Kenny Gainwell? So I think in this game, we talked about it. After the Bears game, when he got hurt, and Sanders only had 11 carries, in this game, 
Sanders is going to have a nearly – you watch. He'll have 25, 22 to 25 carries in this game. I All guarantee right. it. All right. All right, Sam, when we get back, I want to talk to you about another of my theories being the first quarter theory and how important it is that the Eagles get off quickly. I want your thoughts on that. And also the Giants – maturing passing game and uh, how and what other differences there are from this matchup versus the one of the Meadowlands in which the Eagles won handily. We're going to do all that and we're going to go around the division weekend with Sal Powell when we get back here on this week of pro football. Hi, right, welcome back to This Week in Pro Football, a divisional weekend edition. Pat Callahan here with uh, the great Sal Palantonio. You can follow Sal on Instagram at Sal, ES, Sal Pal ESPN. Uh, I got it, right? I got it. <laughs> you got to get You're going to get it, Pat. You're going to get it one of these days. I got it. That's all that matters. Sal Pal ESPN. That's the Instagram handle. Right, it's man. very Eagle centric, as you know. All right. My first quarter theory, Sal, I've, I've probably told you this now 20 some years in a row. Is it, and, I, and it's an offshoot of my number one seed premise that I think, like, and I, a, a classic example is the 2007 game between the Cowboys and the Giants. The year the Cowboys, the Giants won the Super Bowl was uh, early in the first quarter. Amani Toomer caught a pass uh, from uh, Eli Manning, and off he goes, breaks a couple tackles, a 50 some yard touchdown, and the air just went right out of whatever air there was in the Cowboys building at the time. And the Giants went on to win the game. How important is it that the Eagles remind the Giants who the number one seed is in the first quarter? I think it's critically important. Uh, the Eagles' defense is built on the Eagles' offense scoring first. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Sal Pal, I mean, why in the world do they defer when they win the coin flip? I don't know, Pat. They do, and right. I don't get it. It's counterintuitive to yep. the way they play football. Right. So I think it's very important for them to get up early. And the way to get up early is to take the boogeyman out of that psychology that you talked about early on, and that right. is to play tempo, no huddle. If the first drive is not cons consisted of – no huddle, 80% of the time, I'll be shocked. Get up to the line of scrimmage, and that's the way you defeat the, the psychological mindset because you're in the moment of the game. Right. And if you listen to Shane Steichen, he gave a really interesting clue yeah. this week. I sent you that transcript. Yep. And he said, you know, why, well, he was asked, why did you have so much success December 11th when you won 48-22? to 22? Right. And he said, because Jalen Hurts did a great job of processing what he saw from Wink Martindale's defense and getting out of the bad plays and getting into the good ones. And here's the key quote. We passed the ball well early in the game. Yep. We passed the ball well early in the game. And when the Eagles pass the ball well early in the game, they're undefeated. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think, Sal, that has, that's an excellent point. And what you sent to me there is true, what Steichen is saying. I thought it was probably Hurts' best game. And then the way he executed, just blew them out in the first quarter and let the Giants know it wasn't their day. Now, Sal, this is a And they ran, they ran on it. But the Giants, you know, they're, they're a different team. I yeah. just covered them in Minneapolis. I was say that, yeah. Yes, they're a yeah. different team, Pat. Yeah, you got, you got uh, Hodgins, Slayton, and James, three guys whose names no one would have known halfway through the season 16 catches 224 yards last week against Minnesota you know what else was notable Sal Saquon Barkley only had 14 touches in that game last week against Minnesota so has the Giants offense matured that quickly and do you see them uh do you see the Giants passing game being a a possible big factor Saturday night first six to eight weeks the Giants offense was a Saquon Barkley offense Right. The last seven to nine weeks, it has been a Daniel Jones offense. He's had the highest QBR, highest QBR of any quarterback in the NFL in the last five weeks of the season. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. That, that is, is pretty, pretty good. good. And you mentioned, so remember Brady now, Tom Brady. Let's, let's make a comparison. How many Tom Brady's wide receivers are going to the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yeah, really not that many. You know, no, he raised he raised the level. I mean, Randy yep. Moss was a built-in Hall of Famer right. when he got there. Right. 
Maybe Julian Edelman has yeah. a shot. And, yeah. of course, Rob Gronkowski is a tight end. No, in terms of wide receivers. So let's look at the Isaiah Hodgins example. He's played eight games. He has 42 catches for 351 yards in eight games. Saquon Barkley only has 338 yards in 16 yeah. games receiving. Yeah. So he's already eclipsed yeah. Saquon Barkley in the passing game. I'm telling you. Isaiah Hodgins, I got to look up his number, number 18. Watch for number 18 in this game. He yeah. is going to be important for this football game. No question. So where it's out at this point with the way the two teams come into this game, where do the Eagles have a decided edge over the Giants in terms of the Eagles 22 and the Giants 22? Yeah. I think it has to be secondary, although they Dory Jackson being back and Xavier Kenny, you know, and Julian Love is playing very, very well. So uh, the secondary for the Eagles, those two corners, uh, I, I want to see specifically how Dallas Goddard does in this game. So I'm talking about ball out, ball out, ball out. So the right. Giants gave up the highest completion percentage to tight ends this year, 77%, and the highest – yards per attempt to tight ends eight and a half because they leave the open in the middle of the field open most of the time when they blitz right. they blitz more than any other team so to oh, me yeah. dallas goddard believe it or not is i think oh, yeah. going to be the oh, yeah. a, a, a huge in this football oh, yeah. game. you, you can certainly make that you mentioned the two guys miles sanders dallas goddard I think Dable's going to blitz all night long, Sal. Sure. I, I think he he, he kind of got away with it last week. He didn't really do it that much. As a matter of fact, on that deciding play, well, he got he was getting he was getting good penetration from his front four. He didn't need to do it. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't get that kind of penetration against the Eagles' offensive line. Yep. But you mentioned Hertz gets rid of the ball fast, and that's a guy he can get rid of it fast to is Dallas Goddard, right? Yep, and, De and Dexter Lawrence had a great game because he just manhandled Garrett Bradbury, the center who had just come back for his first game after a long injury. Right. Uh, Dexter Lawrence did not have a great game when the Eagles played December 11th up at MetLife Stadium. He had no pressures against Jason Kelsey okay. and Lander Dickerson. So right. it's a difference. I think the interior of the Eagles offensive line is a big strength. Right. I think the corners are a big strength, without a doubt. I right. think the tight end is a big strength. Strength. Uh, uh, so it's in the margins, Pat. Yeah. It's definitely in the margins. Yeah. We've had a, we've had the highest number of one score games in the history of the I NFL, know, and me. you've seen a lot of these home teams in the playoffs stumble out of the gate. I mean, the Bills stumbled out of the gate. The Bengals stumbled out. I of the agree, gate. Sal. You're uh, right about who, that. Look at the Bucks. Yeah. The Bucks, Man, the Bucks didn't even get out of the gate. They didn't even get out of the gate. Yeah. So, Pat, I mean, you, and that's why it goes back to your question. Your question is spot on, spot on. You got to start strong in this football yeah. game. Yeah. So, I just asked our Evan Kaplan, our ESPN stats and information guru, about your question. He said the Eagles scored 89 points in the first quarter during the regular season, seventh in the NFL but the defense gave up 84 points in the first quarter, which was 27. So that? their plus five point that? margin in the first quarter yeah. was tied for 12th during the regular season. Right. So it wasn't yeah. that great, Pat. No, the second quarter was their big quarter this year. But uh, I, I I just think in the playoffs, uh, I, I think it's all going to come down, Sal, as you said a few minutes ago. It's number one. The difference between Hertz and Daniel Jones still has to be substantial enough. But oh, I don't think it's going to be. No, I think you may be right. Yeah. No, yeah, Pat, I don't. Right. I think yeah. Daniel Jones has totally yeah. elevated his game. Yes. He sees the field. He's very yeah. decisive. He's yeah. got long legs, and he can run, and he's I got know. speed. I know. So I would I say, boy, oh, boy, watch out for Daniel Jones. He in the carried the game. ball eight times more than Barkley did last week. Uh, for the oh, I was there. I remember. Yeah, I saw yeah, the whole thing. I yeah. interviewed him in the hotel. And here's the yeah. thing about Daniel Jones, and he's a lot like Jalen. He's a CEO. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I interviewed him, when he got drafted, when Gettleman drafted him, I interviewed him in the hotel the night before in Minneapolis, and then after the game, Pat, he was the same guy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, good for him. Good for him. I'm glad. And boy, I'll tell you, Sal, what a time to get hot. 
just as your just as your entry level contract is over and the team didn't pick up your option, the Giants are going to write a big check. To I know Jones. another thing your father told you, Pat, because your fa- my father told me in life, timing is everything. <laughs> That's right. How many times your old man said yeah, that to you? Plenty. Pat? All right, listen now. Speaking <laughs> of timing, I only got a few minutes left with you, so let's get around here. These other three games. Just give me a sentence or two on how you think. Each is going to go. All right, let's go. Do you go. see Jacksonville with any kind of puncher's chance at Kansas City? Well, they lost big in Kansas City, 27-17 to 17 in Week 10. And what was the key to that game? Patrick Mahomes converted 7 of 10 on third down on the money down at 70%. Most teams are happy to get 50% yeah. on third down. Yeah. If the Jaguars don't get Mahomes off the field on third down, they got no shot. I agree. All right. And then Sunday, I was saying at the top of the show, just a great doubleheader of football here. A lot of talk, Sal. Cincinnati, <laughs> Cincinnati yeah. with a very good chance against, to me, Sal, this game Sunday, Josh Allen, two more interceptions last week. This game, to me, will rest on how many interceptions or turnovers Josh Allen uh, foists upon his own team uh, in that game Sunday afternoon. Talk about two teams limping to the finish line. The Bengals almost lost at home to Ty Huntley. I know. The Bills almost lost at home to Skylar Thompson. (laughs) That's a fact. Pat, two teams limping to the finish line. I know. Neither one of them can go to Kansas City and win. I I think the Chiefs have – I think the Chiefs have, you know, they, they get through the – I mean, these are two of the weakest games that, the, that Kansas City will have, the yeah. weakest opponents, I think. And then the Sunday night game, a, a renewal of an old and very bitter rivalry uh, postseason anyway between the Cowboys and the 49ers. 49ers have now won 11 straight, Sal. Uh, Dallas goes from looking awful against Washington to just hitting every cylinder last week against San Francisco. What do you think here? I was on Get Up this morning with Mike Greenberg and Rob Nikovich, the old linebacker for the Patriots, was on the show. And he said the Cowboys were in a pillow fight uh, <laughs> against the Bucks. The Bucks yeah. threw it, what, like 97 times? 66 times. 66 huh. pants. That's a pillow fight. That's, not, that's seven on seven. Yeah. You know, and, and now they're going to go out to San Francisco where that D'Amico Ryan's defense is going to hit them. Yeah. They're going to get McCaffrey left, McCaffrey right, right. Debo Samuel on the sprint uh, sweeps. I yeah. mean, it's going to be different. Yeah, Micah Parsons so. is going to have to have his head on a swivel. Yeah, that's going to be. I tough like one. the Niners in this game. I do. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's such an arrogant bunch. But I do believe San Francisco is coming here. I hope. I hope it's here, Sal. Uh, but uh, we'll oh find no, out. no, no! I'm rooting for the Cowboys to come in here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a repeat of the 80 championship. Game. Yeah, that would be something. You're right about that. All right, well, listen, Sal Powell, would you believe that is it? That is it for the year. All right. I've used up all my Sal Powell for 2022-23, <laughs> but I enjoyed having you on very much. You were outstanding as usual. And uh, um, I, I'm going to look for you. We'll look for the matchup show, and we'll look for you all throughout the playoffs here uh, on ESPN. All right. Well, congratulations on a great year. On this week in pro football on Jacob Media, I get tremendous positive feedback all over the place about the show, about Jacob Media. It's been an honor again to be on with you, Pat, this week in pro football. Pat, I do believe, Pat, this is the 20th year of our partnership together on radio and television. That's right. You know, Only about 20 more to go, Sal. Then that's right. it. I'm calling it quits. All right. Well, you Tom? know, there's a, a big raise in my contract after the 20th. It's built <laughs> into the deal, Pat. I hope you knew that, right? I think I got one option. I think I got one option here, Sal. So I'll have to check. I'll check and see. You can trust me. All right. All right. Sal, thanks very much, pal. Best to you. All right. All right. The great Sal Palantonio joining me there. Great discussion about this game. And, uh, you can tell Sal is really pumped up for this game. The fact that, and I guess it is good. It is great to see the Giants coming here at division rivalry, but uh, it's a much better giant team than the one that, that the Eagles saw back in December uh, when the Eagles beat them 48 to 22. We're going to talk about that at length with Pat Leonard from the New York daily news. And uh, we'll also get around. We'll talk about the Cowboys in San Francisco. See if Pat has any different take than Sal did uh, about that game. We'll do all that next on this week in pro football. 